Hello everyone, and I hope you're doing great. Now, today we want to explore four different methods how to determine T1 and T2. The main purpose of this lesson is really to understand the diagram and also know how to apply the different methods. Now, what I will do is to go through each method in different lessons to provide the answers for T1 and T2. Now, typically in a question, they will tell you that a mass is hanging from a ceiling by ropes, um, chains, or threads, or you know, strings, whatever it is. The idea is, though, in those types of materials, what you will have will be tensional forces, all right? And hence, we have our T1 and T2. Now, what you want to do first, though, is to really, is to really analyze the diagram and pull from it and draw your force diagram or your free body diagram, all right? So to start with this, we're going to represent our mass. Once you have a mass, you must have a weight acting downwards due to gravity. So therefore, weight acting downwards is a product of mass and gravity. So in this case, gravity is 9.8. So we're going to say 9.8 times 50. So therefore, we get 490 newtons acting downwards. Now, we also have our tensional forces, T1 and T2, respectively. And also notice closely in the diagram, you notice that they're acting at a certain angle. And so therefore we have our angles represented there on our diagram as well. And so this is generally our free body diagram. From this though, what I want to do is to go back a little bit and add some more information on this diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to draw a Z shape right there. If you notice, you could spot it. And that Z tells us that T2 is acting from the ceiling as well as from the mass at the same angle, which is 30 degrees. In a similar way for our T1, if you notice, again, our Z shape and the opposite sides, the angles are equal. And so therefore, on top, we also have 40. And so therefore, T T1 is acting at 40 degrees from the ceiling as well. All right, and so that's a bit more information there. And so this bit of information can be used now to get more information, which is awesome. And so the next set of information that we can get from this is really our X and our Y components of T1 and T2. So here now, um, a matter of fact, let me point out something. For the 490, we only have a Y component. There's no X because it's not acting at an angle. It's acting straight through the mass, all right? So therefore, there's no X component of the 490, only Y. All right, so for T1, the X component will be negative T1 cos 40 degrees. Again, the negative is because it's going towards the left or in the negative x. Similarly, for T2, going towards the right, it is now positive, so therefore it's going to be T2 cos 30 degrees. All right? Now, for our y components, starting with T1, we have T1 sine 40 degrees, and our T2 sine 30 degrees, and that will be our y components. Now, from all of this, we can now determine the total forces in the X and also in the Y. A point to note right now is that the mass is in equilibrium, which means the forces, they are all balanced. And so therefore, the sum of the forces in the X must equal to zero. Similarly, the total forces in the Y must also equal to zero. But let's start with our X first, all right? The total forces in our X will be that of the T1 and also T2, as we have them in the diagram there, and they must equal to zero. So from this, we can state that T1 cos 40 degrees is equal to T2 cos 30 degrees, all right? And from that, we can also find our T1 based on that expression. So T1 equals to T2 multiplied by cos 30 over cos 40. From that as well, we can also find our T2, which equals to T1 multiplied by cos 40 over cos 30. 
going towards our Y, we have all the Y forces. I notice there are three Y forces here, which is T1 sine 40 plus T2 sine 30 degrees minus 490. 490 is acting downwards. That's why it is minus from them. All right? Or a different way you could look at it, you can say plus negative 490 because 490 is in a negative y direction, all right? And it must equal to zero. From this expression, we can have here that T1 sine 40 degrees plus T2 sine 30 degrees must equal to 490, all right? And so therefore, from this, we can also have different expressions. All right, so you can also practice how you can find T1 and T2 from this expression. And so we can use the algebra method to solve for T1 and T2. Also, from this as well, you can also use simultaneous equation. So we have two methods coming out of this, both algebra and simultaneous equation. All right, let's jump into our next two methods. The first one is the Lamy's formula. Now, what we're going to do is to reconstruct this to, to determine Lamy's formula. Now, Lamy's formula actually come from the sine rule, all right? So we say it is a derivative of the sine rule. And so here, now, what we're going to do is to explain what is the Lamy's theorem. And Lamy's theorem states that when three forces act on an object that keep it in equilibrium, then each force is proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two forces. So the most important thing to determine T1 and T2 by using the, the Lamy's formula is to know the force, the angle actually, between, the, between each force or between the forces really. And so let's go to the top first, right? The angle between those two forces, which is T1 and T2, Again, they're on a straight line. We have 40 and we have 30. So therefore, to get the, the central part, which is that angle, then what we're going to have here, it, it will be 180 minus 40 plus 30. All right? So that's the remaining portion. Again, 180 minus um, 70 will give us 110 degrees. Now, for the other side here, if you notice it, we have 30 and then we have the, the 490, which is perpendicular to the x. And so therefore, it, it will be 30 degrees plus 90. And as a result, that is 120 degrees. Going on the opposite side, again, we have our 40 degrees and our 490 acting perpendicular from that x position. So therefore, that will be a 90 degrees. So it will be 40 plus 90 equals to 130 degrees. So based upon this, the, this um, theorem, what we can have here is that T1 over sine 20, 120 actually, because 120 is opposite to T1, if you notice it, right? And, and it's also equal to T2 over sine 130, because sine 130 is opposite to T2. And it's also equal to 490 over sine 110 degrees, because 110 is opposite to 490. All right, and so that's the equation we have based up on Lamy's formula. All right, let's dive into the last one. The last one is looking at the sine rule. So again, we're going to reconstruct this to apply the sine rule. The first thing I want to look at is the direction of the forces. That's very important when it comes on to the sine rule. The direction of the forces is, is absolutely important. And so the one that's acting downwards, let's draw that one first. That is 490 degrees. Then we can draw our T2. Notice where, two, where T2 is coming from, the, the mass. So we're going to consider them acting on each other or relative to each other. So let's draw T2 now relative to 490. We get that. We put back our angles there to make life easier. Also now our T1 going towards that direction relative to T2. And so we're going to draw it like that. Again, we put our angles there as well. What we can do now is to find the angles within the triangle. And so at the bottom there, it will be 60 degrees because it will be at 90 degrees. So 60 uh, minus 90 is 30 or 30 minus 90 is 60. All right. Also at the top, that will be 50. Again, 90 minus 40, we get 50 there. And then 
that piece that going towards the right, the total angle there, as you see, that is 30 plus 40, and that will give us 70 degrees. All right, and so that will be our triangle now that we can apply it now, our sine rule. All right, and so I want to thank you for watching this lesson. And again, I'm coming with the answers for each method in different lessons. So see you in those lessons, all right? Keep safe and keep blessed. Talk to you soon.